Ms Beasley sat at the desk in her office. The sign on the door said, Sticky Situation Services, Ms Beasley, Manager. I wish there was some work for me, she said. But these days, people never get in any trouble. Miss Beasley sighed and swivelled back and forth in a swivel chair. She looked out the window. On the lawn, near the pavement, the pigeons and seagulls picked up the crumbs left over from yesterday's lunch. The postman walked past and put something in the box. Miss Beasley rushed out. It was a letter with a fast post sticker on it. She opened it. Dear Miss Beasley, she read, we've got a sticky situation. I want to keep a dinosaur at school, but everyone is scared of it. Can you help? Yours sincerely, Justine Smith, Room 10, Korake School. Neat, said Miss Beasley. She put the letter in a pocket and ran inside to the cupboard to get the manual on dinosaurs. Then she ran to get a bicycle. She stuffed the manual in the saddlebag, put on a helmet and biked as fast as she could to Koraki School. She swerved up to the school gate. The gate was shut. I'm from Sticky Situation Services, she yelled. Where's the principal? The window of the school office slid open. He's round the back, called out the secretary. But you can't take your bike around there. It doesn't like bicycles and it's already eaten Justine Smith from room 10. The office window slammed shut. This is a sticky problem, all right, muttered Miss Beasley. She leaned the bicycle against the fence, climbed over the gate and marched round to the back of the school. At first, all she saw was a lot of prefabs and a big macrocarpa pine tree. Then she saw the children. Under the prefabs and under the shrubbery, all the children sat with their knees pulled up and their elbows pulled in tight. Kids shouldn't be hiding, said Miss Beasley. Kids should run around having a good time. I reckon I got here just in time. Then she saw the principal's feet. They were wearing sneakers and dangling out of the macrocarpa pine. We've got to sort this out, she yelled. Come down! Oh, I'd, I'd rather stay up here, said the principal in a shaky voice from high up in the macrocarpa. The dinosaur will get us, wailed the children. And then Miss Beasley saw the dinosaur. It was so big and so grey that it looked like another prefab. But it was a dinosaur, and it was sitting on the playing fields. It gave a little roar and a shake which looked as if it might be a contented wriggle. This is a sticky situation, and this is my job, said Miss Beasley to herself. She marched over to the dinosaur. The dinosaur wriggled again. It lifted its head up and up and up. Its neck was long and its head was small. It had large brown eyes and a wide mouth. It opened its mouth. Run, said the principal high up in the macrocarpa. Help, cried the children low down under the prefabs. Stop fussing, said Miss Beasley. Don't you know a diplodocus dinosaur when you see one? If you want to keep a pet, you better learn a bit about it. It's already eaten Justine Smith cried the children. It'll be the room nine kids next, cried the principal. Miss Beasley picked some leaves from the shrubbery. I'm pretty sure the Diplodocus is a plant-eating dinosaur, she said. Let's hope so, eh? She held the leaves out. The dinosaur's little head turned to look at her. Its large brown eyes grew larger. The long neck swayed down. The Diplodocus dinosaur ate the leaves. Miss Beasley patted the dinosaur's knee and it gave another wriggle. Tasty, eh? She said, don't gobble or you'll get a stomach ache. Don't encourage that thing, screamed the principal. He kicked his sneakers so hard the laces came undone. Miss Beasley took the letter out of her pocket and read the name at the bottom. Justine Smith. She wrote me a really good letter. OK, where is she? A girl with curly black hair came out from behind the dinosaur. Here I am. She said, I've been scratching its back to keep it happy. Justine, cried the principal. I thought the Diplodocus had eaten you. It only likes plants, sir, said Justine. I did say, but you ran up the macrocarpa. The principal climbed down and tied up his laces. Uh, thank goodness Miss Beasley came to sort things out. 
I thought you might know much about how to take care of a dinosaur, said Miss Beasley. So I've got a copy of the manual for you. It's in my saddlebag on my bike. The principal screamed again. No, the dinosaur hates bicycles. It goes on the rampage. Don't show it your bicycle. I don't suppose it's ever seen a bike before, said Miss Beasley. Anything new can be really scary. She reached up and patted the Diplodocus again. It roared happily. Come along. Let's get the manual. They all went round to the school gate. Miss Beasley, the principal, Justine and all the kids. The dinosaur came last. Miss Beasley wheeled a bike up and down and let the dinosaur sniff the wheels. It whimpered a bit at first, but it settled down in the end. It'll be terrific for the kids to have such a whopping big pet, said Miss Beasley. I reckon they'll learn a lot from this. What happens when we run out of shrubbery? asked the principal. Oh, ask people for their hedge clippings. And what about when the dinosaur has to go to the, you know, the, the bathroom? Miss Beasley thought for a moment. Justine could train it to use the compost heap. Justine nodded. The other children screamed and held their noses. Well, better get back to my desk, said Miss Beasley. With luck, there'll be more work to do by now. She hitched up her stockings, waved goodbye to the dinosaur and biked back to the office.